Today I will be reviewing the Midnight Solar Classic 250 Solar Charge Controller. This is an MPPT Solar Charge Controller and it's made in the USA. So it's the best kind of controller you can get. It's made for lead acid batteries only. But can it work for lithium ion batteries also? That's what we're going to find out in this video. So the first part of the video will be a review of this charge controller. And in the second part of the video I'll try to use it on my lithium ion battery pack to see if it works. Let's get started. Midnight Solar has a few models of this solar charge controller. They have the classic 150, 200 and 250. The numbers 150, 200 and 250 represent the input voltage from the solar panels. So with the classic 150, the maximum open circuit voltage from the solar array is 150 volts. The classic 200 can do 200 volts and the classic 250 can do 250 volts. This one here is a classic 250, so it can take up to 250 volts from my solar array. With a higher input voltage, it's easier and cheaper to run your wires because now you can use thinner electrical wires. So if you decide to buy one of these, I'd recommend the one with higher rate of voltage. First, let's take a look at the specs of this charge controller. The maximum input voltage from the solar panel is 250 volts open circuit. Maximum current, 62 amp. Battery is supported. 12, 24, 36, 48, and 72 volts lead acid batteries. Wattage. According to this graph, this controller will max out at about 3700 watts max at 72 volts. The battery system I currently have it hooked up is a pack of four 12 volt lead acid deep cycle batteries connected in series to make it a 48 volt battery pack. I have a total of eight batteries, so I connect them in 4S 2P configuration. So I got two in parallel, and then they connect in series with the next two in parallel and so on until I reach 48 volts. This controller can do wind, hydro and solar. I do not have wind or hydro so in this video I'm just going to show you how it works with my solar system. The majority of people will use this with a solar system anyway. My solar array consists of 9 solar panels each puts out about 40 volts open circuit. I cannot connect all 9 panels in series because that will make them 360 volts total output. This controller can only do 250 volts maximum so I connect them in 3S 3P configuration. So the total open circuit voltage is about 120 volts DC. When under load they are about 95 to 100 volts DC. The very first thing you gotta do when you first receive the new midnight controller is you have to open up the front plastic cover and remove the label on the screen and connect the fan and the screen cables. To do this you have to pinch the plastic cover and try to pull it out. It's very hard to do by hand so I use a screwdriver to pry it out. Next, open up the front metal cover and install the battery and solar cables. Installing the battery and solar cables are very straightforward. You got a battery positive and negative and you got solar positive and negative. The only important thing you have to do is to install the disconnect switches and fuses for both the solar and battery connections. That way you can safely turn on and off the system if needed and use a combination of fuse switches. They are switches but they also have fuses inside to protect the circuit. And the other one next to it is just a DC disconnect. The next thing we have is the battery temperature sensor. This sensor allows the unit to compensate for the difference in your battery temperatures between the seasons. So it can charge the batteries accordingly. If you live in a climate where there's a huge swing in temperature difference between the seasons, then you absolutely need to install this. Another reason for installing this sensor is for when you charge the battery at a fast rate, it will heat up the battery. Having a temperature sensor will put a brake on the charging process to slow it down so that it would protect the battery from being damaged and at the same time it would charge it safely. Installing this is very easy. There's a double sided tape on the back of the sensor and you just have to stick it on one of your battery. The other end connector will go to the controller and that's it. Next let's talk about system grounding. This unit comes with a ground fault protection system called GFP. The way it works is it will detect the fault between the solar and battery negative relative to earth ground. Then it will turn off the charge function and sound a loud alarm. When the fault is clear, it will resume charging your battery. The GFP function on this system supports positive grounding, negative grounding, and ungrounded system. 
I'm just going to talk about the most basic ground most of us use, which is either grounded or ungrounded. So if you decide to ground your system, you need to connect a bare copper wire from the unit directly to earth ground. That can be done by simply hammer a piece of iron directly into the ground and connect your bare copper wire onto it. On the charge controller, there's a GFP jumper connector and it must be on to enable the GFP function. Also in this configuration, you must not connect your battery or solar negative to ground. If you do, then it will defeat the purpose of the GFP function. If you decide not to ground your system, you won't have any GFP protection feature, but that will simplify your installation. In this case, you have to remove the GFP jumper to disable it. What I would do is I would just simply remove the jumper and put it on just one pin to hang it on so I don't lose it. The next thing you have to do to disable GFP is to go to the Twix menu on the main unit and turn off the GFP function. After you have connected your battery and solar cables to the unit, you will need to adjust the voltage on the display of the unit. The nice thing about this charge controller is it will allow you to adjust the voltage of your system to the most accurate measurements. So even if it's off by a few volts, there will be no problem adjusting the voltage back to the accurate value. So on the screen, you see the voltage display for both my battery bank and the solar array. This number is not accurate. If I take my voltmeter and measure the actual voltage of both battery and the solar array, you see it's about half a volt too high. I can bring this voltage down on the unit by going into the menu and then tweaks, and then from there I can reduce the voltage down to the accurate value. Click save, it will save the voltage value and now it can display the accurate voltage as I adjusted. This is a very nice feature that I don't see in a lot of other charge controllers. Next, I'm going to talk about charging stages for lead acid batteries. It basically has three stages, bulk or constant current, absorb or constant voltage, and float for maintenance. It also has an equalization mode to balance out the battery. I need to talk about this because I'm going to come back to this when I try to charge my lithium ion battery on this charger. The nice thing about this charger is that you can fully adjust all charging voltage parameters on the menu system and you can adjust the voltage using very fine adjustment up to 0.1 volts increments. Next step, I'm going to disconnect my lead acid battery and connect my lithium ion battery pack and see if it would charge my lithium ion battery. So what I have here is a 36 volt nominal Nissan Leaf battery pack. It's actually a 10S battery pack that can take up to 41 volts maximum. Let's take a look again at the charging stages of the lead acid battery. It's almost the same as the lithium ion battery except the float mode. It has constant current, constant voltage, but the difference here is that the lithium ion batteries do not have float modes. They actually prefer to be at 50% charge if you want to keep them in storage mode for a long period of time not being used. But because I will use it every day so it's not going to be at 50% storage mode. So I'm going to adjust the float charging stage to be the same voltage as the absorption stage. And also lithium ion batteries do not have equalization mode so I'm going to disable it by going to the charge menu, EQ, Auto EQ and choose 0 to disable it. Q. Okay, and now we do manual zero. Okay, that is equalization off. Zero means off. Save. Done. Lithium ion batteries instead need to be balanced charged with a balanced lead. And because this charge controller does not have balanced leads, I will need to periodically balance charge this battery pack with a separate balance charger. I don't have to do the balance charge very often because I've been using this particular battery pack for over 30 cycles and the battery is still perfectly balanced. So I'm going to main menu, charge, volts. Okay, I have to reduce this and this down to 41 volts. So have to adjust the absorb voltage first. Forty one volts. Float at the same voltage. Okay. So 
So that's the Nissan Leaf battery and you can see it works fine with my charge controller. Now I have a different battery here. This is uh, also a lithium ion. It's a power tool battery and it's rated at 60 volts. This one is actually a 15S battery pack. So the maximum charging voltage is 63 volts. Currently it is at 61.3 volts. So it's about 95% full. I'm going to connect this to my charge controller to see if it works. So here you can see it's connected to my charge controller and shows exactly the voltage 61.3 so first thing i gotta do is to adjust the charging voltage so go to the main menu charge volts and go to absorb i'm going to change this to 63 63 volts change the float to 63 there you go press enter it will save now I'm going to turn on my solar array. Okay, you hear a relay click, MPPT is charging. 30 watts. So it's working just fine. So there you have it. That's how you can charge a lithium ion battery pack with a Midnight Classic Solar Charge Controller. This is actually the best charge controller I've had so far. The ability to adjust voltages for any charging stages and any battery type makes it one of the most versatile charge controllers on the market. With this charge controller, I can charge any lithium ion battery pack from 12 volts all the way up to 90 volts. And not just with lithium ion, I can charge any other types of batteries such as nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, lithium iron phosphates. The possibility is actually endless. And that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.